What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And tonight, we have a very special guest in the building. We're talking about this generation's new soca artists. You know who we have in the building today? We have Irfan Alves in the building, EA in the building tonight. What's going on, my brother? Excellent. Yeah, man. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome. Blessed. Welcome back to Toronto. Yeah, more blessing, no stressing. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Happy 2022. Same to you, man. All right. How's the year been treating you so far? Well, excellent. Just me, you know, I'm just benefit- benefiting from the fruits of hard labor right now. Yeah. So, you know, all the work that I would have put in, you know, coming into the new year, you know, we're already reaping rewards. So okay. it's just a matter of me understanding that appreciating that and keeping focused yeah yeah man for sure for sure so i guess 2019 was a big year for you eh? yeah <laughs> definitely give me two of your highlights from 2019 what you really stood out for you in your career. <laughs> getting verified on instagram <laughs> oh you got verified yeah okay J- just like that yeah after years of doing what it takes to kind of put it in place yeah um, we just had one title meeting, and afterwards, that was it. We just, we, him and I were just driving now. What, yeah. what, what, what highway or road that was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Um, so one of my female friends was like, so in Trini dialect, I was like, you could have tell me I get verified, which means like, um, you're hiding things now. Yeah. And I was like, what were you talking about? Stop playing. And yeah. then I went on my page and I saw that little blue, blue yeah. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, another highlight. I mean, just coming off the the heels of the the carnival season, it was just a, a, a nice feeling to see that my style of soca yeah. was actually reaching out to the local fans and by extension the international fans. Yeah. Because if you listen to my music, I don't really just sing, jump and wave and whine alone. No. I just my lyrical content, you know, expands way beyond the the local carnival box, I should say. Yeah. So to see that they were actually soaking it all in and, 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 and enjoying it just the same yeah. like what they are accustomed hearing that was like a big deal for me and it's just a reminder that you know whatever part you have for yourself just continue along there once you're confident about it and yeah. you know one day sooner or later you know you will you, you it will get you you'll get to where you're going yeah. that makes sense too because i know you say lyrical because whenever you listen to any of your content yeah. you know it's the lyrics that really stands out to me mm-hmm. where did you get that style or what inspires you to be so lyrical in the first place you know I, i've been writing since i was a kid you know okay. my father used to write for me and kind of own way as an individual so you yeah. know i tell myself i want to write too yeah <laughs> okay and you know growing up listening to dancehall reggae hip-hop i was exposed to music that wasn't about one particular thing Got so you. i grew up if i'm being honest i grew up understanding soca's carnival music okay. and then as i became a little more knowledgeable about the history uh, of the genre itself i understood that you know it could be used it was also used for example sparrows rum and coca-cola and gene and diana was about prostitution around the times when sailors okay. were in trinidad yeah so they put that into song and then like if we fast forward to my song No Abla, does time stamping yes. when a lot of Venezuelans come into Trinidad and Tobago. So mm. I realized like what I was like forced to interpret and understand about a culture was just because of like that's how the media set up as in carnival time. We would have some call of soca switch and then you would just play soca alone yeah. till Ash Wednesday. And as a kid, I think that, that yeah, that's it. That's how it is and that's the way it, always gonna be and i just started growing up and soak, soaking in all these other genres and realizing well yo this 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 season thing not really making sense because no, we can't really develop a, we can't really develop a market like that so i just decided naturally to kind of express myself in, in 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 various forms and like i believe that when everybody realized how serious i was on that movement was yeah. a song called overdue now okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's like and to be honest a lot of the DJs didn't understand it at first. A lot of the mm-hmm. soccer fans didn't understand it. I got comments like, yeah, that's a summer song. Why you released that so late? I like, well, yeah. that's soccer, bro. It's just when did, when did you actually release it? Um, September 2017. Okay. So that was for the 2018 or again? You were no, you I just released no music. season. You just uh, released. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. naturally, it would have just flow into that. Because it was slow. Yeah. Nobody was really taking it on. Okay. I mean, what helped it is the music video. It shut yeah. it out in... Um, New York City, Times Square, yeah. and the park, but they didn't understand what I was hearing too much. Yeah, 
And then I was even seeing comments like, why are you taking our culture and putting it in a strange place? So I'm yeah. like, wow, this is a cultural thing where we're seeing people mentally boxed in. Yeah. Because I, as, as I said, just seeing something for, for, for what they thought it was and not knowing that there was bigger than that before. Yeah. And it could come around to being greater than where it, where it even was. So I kind of pioneered that thing called No Seasons Project where I just released mm-hmm. music show there. Yeah. Soca. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need carnival time. Don't need a crop over. Don't need a jab carnival. Don't need. Yeah. Fancy mass, I just boss in so cartoon. Well, anytime you feel like putting out this needs to be released, you put out something. Yeah, new. because that's the only way it could grow. And yeah. I urge all the artists, especially from my generation, because I could reason with them. Yeah. You know? Um, and say like, yo, we need to kinda continue doing this a little more because Nyla do it. Um Pretty had a song called Say Yeah that was released some of the year before and then it yeah. become it became a hit. In the carnival the next year, so okay. Like for example, Noah Bly released that in May 2018 yeah. and it became a hit December into carnival. So it's like you just give it some time, and once we collectively as a soca movement mm-hmm. push down no seasons vibe, then the yeah. DJs will have no choice because a lot of the artists fear that they waste money, yeah, into a project they're paying like thousands of dollars, paying a the producer, they might do a music video to kind of polish up the project and present it to the world now and then. Mm-hmm. The DJ's not really accustomed to playing that kind of music during the year. So. But, I mean, pressure. Yeah. <laughs> apply the pressure. And I saw Afro beat grow on a large scale yeah. because of that unity and that common goal. Of course. And I believe as soca artists, we don't have that common goal yet. Mm-hmm. Everybody's still trying to Push the soca global on their the, own in the season. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, well, be, besides that, everybody, everybody think that they have the idea. Yeah, <laughs> push the soca global. I go and do it, boy. Yeah, I go and make it first, so I go and do it this way. And I, but it's like one thing we representing and it's soca music. So yeah. if we don't come together and kind of apply pressure to the outside market, something, mm-hmm. and the only way we could do that is by fixing it here first. Because what someone who used to work at Sony told me like. We know about soca. We, 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 everybody, we, it's our business to know about every genre in the world, right? Yeah. But it's just that you're not making enough money for, for us to invest in you all, to be a part Got of it. You. And, and, and our soca artists might take, take that as an insult, but it's true. Yeah. The numbers, all right, in, in Trinidad right now, all the millions of streams I get right now, if, mm. if two million Trinidadians view that song, it's not going to yeah. be money. It, number one, nothing set up yet. So mm. it's like we behind in terms of plenty other things. So, once we come together and, and, and create a common understanding mm-hmm. and develop that, that's why a line in my song say, but first, let me fix local now. Then yes, we can take yes, off global now. Yes. So it's not like I just trying to push the soca global and not being real mm-hmm. to the soca fans saying that, yeah, we have plenty of work to do home first you know, before we yeah. even try. So it's to me, like the first thing we need to get together is a mm-hmm. common understanding to move forward. That makes sense, 100% yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. You just mentioned that you listen to hip hop r and B, dance on everything. Yeah. When did you fall in love with Soak and decide that listen, no, no, you know I, I, I was always in love with it. I, was, I had no choice. My father <laughs> and my mother them they listened to Soka music, Calypso music while they clean on weekends. Yeah. Me just running up and down the house so I was brainwashed now. Yeah. So okay. and I, I and I was glad about that brainwash. Because yeah. it, it's something that I'm proud of and I like to to, to build something yeah. and see it grow now. Mm-hmm. So I kind of glad we in this position. I'm not glad we in this position, but yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's just how it's I grow a, a, a product of my environment. Yeah. And, and, and not every um, kid in Trinidad Tobago would have had that experience. True. So like in this the educational system, mm-hmm. I don't feel like if they're doing enough in Trinidad right now to kind of water the plants and them yeah. to nurture the kids to teach them a lot about the history of Calypso and Soca. Yeah. We have little things here and there during the social studies classes, yeah. but I'm talking about like a, a culture class where for you to move up, you know, you all call it grades, we call it standards. So for you to move up grade one, grade two, yeah. you must have a compulsory culture class to, 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 to know and understand the, the, the history of soca music yeah. and who are some of the prominent soca artists and, and this and that. So then now as a kid, you would kind of grow up having a love and, and, and an understanding, yeah, of, and an understanding mm-hmm. of what, what's going on in your society culture wise. Yeah. Because if a kid growing up in China, if you're being real, they hear hip hop, dancehall, yeah, and all these other genres more than soca during the year, and that's okay. because collectively the soca artists don't produce, we don't do much. So it's not like if you can blame one person. So I was fortunate enough to be one of the few that grew up in that household mm-hmm. where the parents used to listen to a lot of Calypso and soca, so that's where my love. 
naturally it came from. So I, I blossom into this big tree right. from a planter <laughs> tree now, and it's a soca tree. So yeah, it's when the yeah. soca leaves and, and soca fruits can come we from got this. Got you 100%. So, so, what yeah. was a young EA like? Same thing, boy. Yeah. I just own way doing my own thing. Yeah. Not listening to my parents, still not listening to them. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, I just doing my thing, getting yeah. into trouble, falling, rising, learning mm-hmm. from mistakes and that kind of thing. So how I am, I ain't changed and I don't think I could change because yeah. I just believe that, you know, I just must stay true to myself and yeah. oh, whatever got me here gonna continue to get me here and there and there and there. So Makes sense. Yeah, I just cool and all, but I had a real normal childhood growing up. Yeah. yeah. You have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have a brother and he lives out there actually. Okay, older yeah. or younger? Older, older, yeah. Okay. So you're the youngest? Yeah, last one. Okay, so you're the spoiled. last one. Spoiled, <laughs> so to say, well, yeah. you agree? Not really. Not really. Kind of. I have this one grudge with my parents that I'll never let go, right? Yeah. And if they give me this, then I would say I spoiled. You okay. know that them little motor scooter, the yeah. kind of motorbike one. Yeah. Yeah, I want. Some kids used to be riding around the neighborhood with that, and I was like, "Yo, daddy, I want one of that." Yeah. And them just never give me the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I if 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 they gave me that, I would say I'm spoiled. Okay, you're spoiled. Yeah, I don't know why. I used to go and print copies of it and stick it on the room door. So every yeah. time they wake, wake up and coming outside, they will see it. They will see the the motor scooter there. Yeah. Like, but you never got it. So I still vex with them for that. But yeah. that's car my childhood, bro. Yeah. <laughs> because you didn't get the motor. No, they're laughing seriously. Yeah. yeah. But you got everything. I won't buy one soon though. Yeah. And ride it up and down in front yeah. of the house. What part of Trinidad did you grow up? Sugar on a Central Trini. What What is that neighborhood like? Normal, middle class, cool. Okay. Developed a lot though. Yeah. So it's a little urban now, but it was kind of like almost, almost countryside. Almost, okay. Almost, almost. It had a lot of bush and it was like, it was a cane field. Yeah. That it turned into a neighborhood. Got you. Yeah. But nice, cool, humble yeah. upbringing, man. And mm-hmm. how far are you from um, Port of Spain? About if you're driving fast, <laughs> ten yeah. to fifteen minutes yeah. on a free road. <laughs> if you if you're going over the hundred um, kilometer per hour limit, yeah. but on a normal drive, uh, twenty five minutes, twenty five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so you're close by. Yeah. All right. What was your thing there? What was your first song that you actually wrote and recorded and released? A song called Carnival Time. Yeah. No, that wasn't it. A song called Positive Lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you were into lyrics in the beginning. Yeah, the lyrics was whack though. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Could we find that anywhere on YouTube? <laughs> yeah. I think nah. Yeah. Nah. That not there, boy, you man. <laughs> About plan to have it like my plan is to have a little museum, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna have all those tracks there and like when you walk into the room and you press play mm-hmm. and you have a little write up about first song. So but that, they had a competition called Soka Star. Okay. That remixed that song and I perform it and but I wrote that song like like long, long time ago. It's still in um secondary school. Okay. That was my first pride and joy now. Because okay. as I said before, my father used to write all my songs and then I just took it upon myself to do it. So yeah. It's a cool song, just like a young person talking about you no know, crime and yeah. Going to the feta party and have a good time. Them kind of ABC lyrics, but I was proud because there was like no help and no assistance. And I went in the studio and the, you know vibe and the producer. All the producers that I would have worked with, yeah, from being a kid to now they knew. Like mm-hmm. if you see them today, I was like, yeah, I'm not even surprised you reach where you reach because from that first day you walk into the studio, mm-hmm. like Black Soul always said when I walked into Roy Cape All Stars some years ago, he was like. And I tell any band, I tell any drummer, no, be it yeah. like this. Thing, yeah. thing. May I come okay. across a little pushy, yeah. but yeah. For me, that just means you know, know what, what you want. want. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's a good one. That was good. Okay. And then you said the first one, you didn't really like that. When did the career start to actually bubble and grow? And you started to see some form of movements. Um, right after that Soka Star competition. So like between... Like that six year journey between 2006 to 2012. Because okay. 2012 was when I got the In Your Eyes song, the Antilles. Yes, yes. So, like, I won a competition called the National School Soka Monarch. Okay. That's where all the secondary schools take part in a mini Soka Monarch. Um, I won 2008 and 2009. Yeah. And uh, they didn't have the competition in 2010. Okay. So that was kind of heartbreaking for me. Yeah, so I was wondering, like, couldn't yeah. come defend it. Yeah. But what a lot of people don't know that it doesn't have any other young person in the business right now who would have entered 
as much soccer Muna competitions like myself. Like, okay. Yeah, I have entered like uh, over eight semifinals. Let's talk about the big soccer Muna. Yeah. yeah. And the semifinals was like my finals because I know as a kid, like, it's not that important for me to make the finals, but I just used to look forward to hearing my name call. For now, semifinals, nobody yeah. knew who it was really, unless it, ar- around the soccer thing. And I just go with all my dancers, like if I really trying to get yeah, into the finals. Yeah. So that was like practice. Mm-hmm. And then I finally got in 2012 in the boat, boat power and um, groovy category. Oh, you got in both? Yeah, that's when they had the boat categories. There. Yeah. So, I mean, that that was like that six year journey was just me. That was like the journey where God trying to see if he really wanted or if he just plain. Or if it's just a passion it's and need a test. Anything. The test. Yeah, that was the test and we passed the test. Mm-hmm. Still being tested now. Yeah. But <laughs> that was the first test, passed that test. So 10, 2012 is when everything really started yeah, boy. moving forward. Yeah, 2012 happened like because I wrote that song for in your eyes as for a female artist, you know. Okay. Yeah. That year I was writing plenty of songs for everybody, yeah. right? Write songs for Marshall, Kess, mm-hmm. everybody. And then she couldn't sing it, so it was like looking for our next female artist yeah. and then one day you know my father and i in the kitchen he just say wait now you fun what we know with that song there boy i say boy we're looking for a female artist yeah. so he said why you just sing it i say what do you mean yeah, yeah you sing it yeah so i was like ah however yeah so i went to the studio by casey phillips precision productions and we just switched some of the lyrics around to make it just, yeah more manly yeah mm-hmm. and that was it yeah. I was in a ta- I was taking a taxi home one day and I just started hearing the thing on the yeah. radio. I tell the driver, <laughs> that me, the driver, like, boy, yeah, I'm, telling, I'm to you, boy, that's yeah. not. Say, boy, that me, that me, that yeah. boy. So I was like, get through. Yeah. Because uh, until it was like a kind of game changer with the sound of soca music. Like. Yes, it was. So I, glad, mm-hmm. I was glad to be a part of that project. Yeah. So 2012, it was like, Mm-hmm. All who didn't know about Ufan and I was on his story and that kind of thing. Yeah. I was like the the the, the fresh youth on the scene, you know. And then after that, you know, I had the flippo and and the pretty and the voice and the second star and you know? all of them who I was wrong before, but everybody after that it's just like I believe that's where the 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 flock of this new generation really started from yeah. 2012 come yes. forward everybody just start getting the bus one by mm-hmm. one after the next year because that's when the whole sound really started yeah. to change also you heard they had more of a at that time they also had what was a tropical house mm-hmm. was big at that time there too so it's almost soca yeah. and tropical house sounded very similar at that time yeah there. because you know like uh, as i always tell people like africa is your root right mm-hmm. of, of of the caribbean song you can't get away from that mm-hmm. so no matter what that's why Afrobeat songs like soca. Yes, yes. But that's really them thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know from colonial times come forward, we just had an African song that rhythm in us now. Mm-hmm. So all these things will just loop over into the next. Even like reggaeton and them kind of thing. All the all, all the same all, thing. All the, all the Latin song, you know, it just come from that one chord there. So that's why I believe too. One day soca will see its way. It just like. Mm-hmm a lot of problems with the identity and the song and I, like the world moves so far ahead in comparison to when it just had Calypso yes and Calypso used to sell like 500,000 records plus and that kind of thing okay. because there wasn't much you know mixing and intermingling with the genres and all that experimenting so it just Calypso was Calypso mm-hmm. but now moving forward so much popular songs in the pop market especially had I say the, <coughs> Like yes. Justin Bieber saying yeah. that I'm sorry. So it's like you hearing something like, and you're gonna see a genre that is not soca. So when somebody else come to you saying like, yeah, this soca, yeah. you're like, nah, yeah. that's something more like whatever we all call it. Out there. Tropical house. Yeah, this and that and island, this and whatever. So that's another reason why we get a little static. But one day, because yeah. it's there already. Mm-hmm. Like if if Justin Bieber sang overdue. Yeah. And oof, and I'll write it. Yeah. I won't be here trying to talk about that. Well, you know, Soka coming to come on, you know. I won't be here. I'll be yeah. somewhere. Oh, yo, man. Yeah. You want an interview? <laughs> hey, yo. Call um, Enforcers, man. Yeah. They'll Tired, take care man. of You can do it over the phone, man. Yeah. But, but, I mean, there's part of the struggle I admire. And years from now, when we bounce up, you could say, yo, remember when we think it? He's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, what thing happened? No, that, that kind exactly. Of. So it's, it's, it's still beautiful in a sense now. It makes sense because I know you're one of the ambassadors that's really pushing yeah, this right. soca global right now. Right? You know what I mean? Exactly what does that mean to you? And where would you plant the flag of soca if you could right now? Say, okay, you know what? That's global. On the moon, but. Yeah, right to the moon. Because everybody on the world. Yeah. 
could just watch up on your moon and see it now. That mm-hmm. is the only place we could collectively see it now. We can't see it if it's in Trinidad right now. Yeah. So that is the mindset now. I'm trying to make things happen in Trinidad so the, the rocket could lift off that platform and just shoot right up so everybody could see it. Yeah. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. God forbid if I not here tomorrow, I hope that the story, the movement, the mission could resonate through all these soca artists. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and I'm going to say that, I mean, like, especially the training soca artists now, because when I attend, uh, when I go to St. Lucia, for example, or Grenada to perform, yeah. right? They don't have these events like um, Carnival Time alone. Okay, it's throughout the, the entire yeah. year. Yeah. You're not going to see, you're not going to see a promoter booking a soca artist in August, bro. No, yeah. boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> but but there's the land of soca. How yeah. come? So as me and the boys were talking last night, like I believe a, a simple thing like a soca festival in August. Yeah. What y'all would call summertime. Mm-hmm. These are the things supposed to happen because Trinidad we became rich through the oil and gas and early tourism like the the rest of the Caribbean islands now. Yeah. So it's come like we just become complacent now. And the powers that be not really focusing on the soca and the calypso in a sense where we had to sell this to the world. Okay. It's like, yeah, them them all right. Them looking good. You've seen soca artists driving bends and things. Yeah. So they're okay. But really and truly, let me say the, the, the oil and the pitch and everything dry up. Mm-hmm. And we don't have anything to, to, to really fuel the economy. It would just be the culture now, the yeah. soca and the calypso, the rap so, the chutney, all them things. So I believe like a lot of common understanding lacking yeah. so that's why i say like that flag it had a plant on the moon For so that everybody, everybody can see, see it. i feel like if we plant it here this side of the willing to see or if we plant it somewhere there that side of the willing to see so it's just that yeah and 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 and, and we don't have any um like what they call it the unions yeah so if if an house has an objective to really try to create a, a proper market home there aren't people who I could go and formally sit down with okay right the Calypsonians had it I still have it, something called two culture and unified Calypso organization okay so those things there need to come into play like the local scene really had a set up in a way where we could come together yeah and put together plans and just move forward and make it happen you're, you're right yeah. where has Soka taken you across this globe where you never thought you would actually reach for singing music yeah like I can remember like Germany I would never forget the day I was in Berlin in the streets and okay. it was like a million people in the city boy and you're not seeing no police yeah there's a kind of culture shop and it's a big truck yeah and it's Soka music playing up. So you've seen okay. all these Caucasian people, mixed people, people of African descent, mm-hmm. Caribbean people, just jumping up together as one. And I like. Yeah. So I saying, we don't know what we have, but. Yeah. Until so it you takes go small outside. meter reach, big up the trick song, they were responsible for really making me reach there. Okay. That was 2014. Mm hmm. It's like, yeah, 2014, so I ain't even the year as I am now. Yeah. You know, still kind of like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> come on, like, we're in Berlin, yeah. So, yeah. I just know for a fact. Mm-hmm. And right now we're talking to people in Japan. Yeah. So, we're going to be, and I was in, I was in, I was in um, Suriname time now. Okay. They don't even speak English mainly. Dutch. And I walk on the stage and the song starts. And I just said, I asked them, yo, what's waving their language? And they told me, so that's the only way that I know. <laughs> I just, the beat start, but the soca beat so infectious. I know, can I say, whatever that word was, hey. And yeah. I just start to see hands and flags. They're waving for the whole set. Yeah. Even if I say hello and I'm talking to them. They wave. <laughs> it's music. So like every time I travel, basically, yeah. is, a, is, a, is a strong kind of force yeah. that puts me together and say, nah, boy. Like do mm-hmm. whatever it, if they're beating your bad home boy. Mm-hmm. If the whole of Trinidad turn against you, do stop boy. Yeah. Because out there, they appreciate it. Okay, it's fresh to them and it's new to them and they love it and it's naturally infectious. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of like we we you know it as I said before, complacency taking place home. Yeah. We know it for what it is and we love it. January and February we can jump up to it. But like we culturally wired mm-hmm. to kinda just rock back. 
after the carnival season and we can't blame so we have a big thing right now in Trinidad where DJs and artists and thing and everybody in the industry well the business mm -hmm. making a row about whether dance or music should play in soca frets or not I heard about so that so yeah what's going on what's your take I break it down for everybody yeah as I said earlier in the interview, mm -hmm. if you born on January the 1st, 1991, yeah. you grew up in a society where every time you turn on the radio mm -hmm. or every time Ash Wednesday come, your mother and your father telling you, don't sing no soca. That's against your religion. We're not supposed to. It's Lent. Yeah. No eating meat. We're not drinking alcohol and you're casting calypso and soca. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to in the video all day? you naturally telling them that you are forbidden to enjoy mm -hmm. or take part in this culture after a date. Mm -hmm. Now, nothing wrong with that because our cultural, that is the colonial times, the Catholics, that is the carnival thing is them thing. Carnival, yeah. like French. That is carnival. So the days before Ash Wednesday is when they are the last piece of revelry which we do on the streets Monday and Tuesday and then Ash Wednesday, all of that stuff. Okay. And everybody was whining and jamming, going in the church like saints now to, <laughs> to, put, a, to put a cross on the forehead with the ashes. <clears throat> so you can't diss that. That is religion now. Yeah. That is the fabric of the thing there that span into the culture. And then you grow up now and you grow up and you think and you, that just wired in your head, bro, from birth. So it's like, as a society, you, you, you reach, like we say, 13 years old now. Yeah. 14, 15, and it's not a big year as a teenager coming into your own. So it come like I tell in my story, but not, not, not the part where your parents force it. I'm just talking about generally, not. I just the common understanding. Mm -hmm. And it's not a realize, but, but I forget them on this thing, why soca is soca, I ain't harming nobody, I just like it myself. What wrong if I just sing a little soca song after? Yeah. But that's not how everybody think. So it reached a point where naturally, it's not as bad as you will get in trouble if you sing the soca songs, but you already know through the, how the media setup is like, boy, who you playing all that soca for by carnival done? I, people literally yeah, used to tell me This is the day, you know, the day after. Dog, who you listening to? I had a little Walkman with a cassette and I used mm -hmm. to listen to Sparrow and thing, going to class lessons and thing, mm -hmm. and my bedrooms and laugh at me, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, that man listening to Calypso, yes? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right. Yeah. Boy, it's not carnival time. Stop listening. I was like, yeah. dog, I like Calypso. If all they like all the rap and all the hip hop, all they do all the thing. Yeah. So you can't vex with a promoter now who grew up like that, who don't have that level of loyalty and appreciation and understanding and respect mm -hmm. for the season that is carnival, where you could tell a DJ, boy, play a little two dance all. Dan, five years ago, nobody wasn't even going and tried to say that. Okay. You would have got a big stone. Yeah. But it's the younger promoters who coming into their own now and who becoming popular, mm -hmm. who have a little power in their hands, who grew up in a society that told them Ash Wednesday, dance all come in, yeah. reggae come in, hip hop come in. God so that is how the whole God thing break down now. Yeah. So like, I'll be mad and crazy if I just vex with you and say, boy, I'm to you by the cynical culture, but I don't know, understand why it is you doing that for? Mm -hmm. Why it is you feel so comfortable? as a promoter to Doing tell that. a DJ after yeah. January 1st especially when you have one of the because this this thing starts from a fet called First Jam right okay. and the promoter is my good bridging yeah. so um, it, I, I guess that they would have told the DJs to play a little bit of dancehall like 2% dance dancehall or a little 2-3 yeah. song mm -hmm. and, and, and the whole place was that called chaos but to me now growing up outside of the music I was just I just realised in life you had to learn to understand why certain things happen so you could kind of you wouldn't blow up then you'll be like oh and then it will help you fix the situation. So mm -hmm. how we go and fix it now? Yeah. Everybody who curling had to shut up yeah. and stop curling and accept the fact that it's our fault that this reach where it is. So now we're in the position, all the younger artists, all the young promoters, we have power now, let me change it. Mm -hmm. And we go to the Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Education and say, hey, we want to help implement something like a soca class and a soca history class. So the kids and them, you know, from form one or even from, from standard one, grade one in, in, in primary school, they, they, they get started to understand and appreciate the culture. So when they're growing up, right, they would they would know the history. So as when they become mature and always yeah. like they know about that already. So we're not forcing culture on them now. So you're putting and, it in the system. Yeah, in the system. And the next step now, the artists on them, 
they had to continue to release soca songs during the year. And the third step now, they can't sing Jump and Wave and Wine whole year. Yeah. They had to sing <laughs> tune like Overdue and yeah. No Abla and Blaze and Love and Soca Global that really speaking about what's going on in society and mm-hmm. would afford the listener to really relate to it now. Mm-hmm. And not, not much of that. Even if it's not dance, even if it's not popcorn tune. Um, give thanks, yeah. Gift. Yo, I want to give thanks too. And when I wake up in the morning, I go play that song because I don't Different really want to hear him. Yeah. But I like dance all and a man speaking positivity and dance all music. I go listen to that because yeah. it just a him is a positive force and that is a positive force he's singing there. Makes so, sense. So, that is a day, you know? Yeah. And then everything, it, it, it went up overnight, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but then everything it just had to evolve. And then now you as a, well, not you, but somebody from who lives out in Toronto yeah. and they see you for now performing Blind Tiger and they say, man, I love that vibe. I love the energy. Well, where can I get more of that? And we can say, well, come Trinidad now. We don't want to say come for Carnival again, boss. Okay, so any time come of the year Trinidad. you can get this vibe. Come Trinidad. And when you come, and I and, and, and hey, four thing now, eh? Yeah. But <laughs> you know, like when you go to Europe. Yeah. How they spend so much money. It's so much money they spend to... To, to restore that church that burned down the other day. Yes, yes, yes. So, why are you saying like we have Kitchener's, Kitchener's house, Reno Rama? Mm-hmm. We're supposed to make sure that that stay. All these CDs and all the clothes and all them kind of thing that stay. So, when the tourists come, yeah, them, yeah, them are a thing toy. Yeah. So, why are we not? All right, we could go visit Sparrow at Sparrow's hideaway. We'll go to Reno Rama, Kitchener's house. We could go to all these places mm-hmm. that, you know, Invest in the, 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 the history. tourism and the history so of the place. Properly, yeah. you know, but I ain't, I ain't don't play no other Caribbean island, but no Caribbean island could really sell soca like we. That's where yeah. the things start. Of course. All them little things. When you land in Trinidad, when I go in Guyana and, and St. Vincent and Grenada and them mm-hmm. place, man, just be playing pan with, 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 with straw hat and, and, and Hawaii shit. And I never see that in Piaco, boss. Yeah. <laughs> I will go back home today in Carnival time start. Yeah. And I'm not even going on here so complain. Yeah. So you suppose when you when you coming in on the plane so and you look out your window, you see that giant steel pan man. Yeah. And the pilot say, Hey, if you look to your left, you would see the national instrument of Trinidad Tobago. Yeah. It's called a steel pan. Next week will be panorama semifinals. You could go them kind of Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't talk, <laughs> I talk all day by anybody. Yeah. I don't talk all day by No, but you're right. I totally and I, I not understand listen, I not listen no, no. I understand. I just saying like these are the things if we really yeah. wanna talk soca global boss, yeah, it's not going and get global from a big tune. Yeah. Because Kevin Little had a big tune is a soca song, yeah. Rupee had big tune. Galen had big tune, everybody yeah. had big tune, but it, there's no these people can't come to the place and understand what's going on and move, say, Yo, let's go there. A if movement. you go there, I you know, totally you know, understand. Movement. It's crazy. We just have a set of artists yeah. now who really mean well. Yeah. But we're doing it wrong because we're doing it isolated now. Make makes sense. Yep. Wanna go through some of your hits here because yeah. you have some monster hits. <laughs> All right. Monster. The one that really brought brought you to the world was in your eyes right yeah yeah yes that yeah. was a big one and the visuals were big the other one that really took you over the top would be like overdue yeah overdue. Right? you just mentioned two names which was um rupee and kevin little right all right overdue has that same kind of essence mm-hmm. to put you in that same place here where 20 years from now yeah. we're gonna hear the overdue yeah that song ain't dead yet yeah I, that song will never die and i just know i have a real strong feeling about that song because it I will never make something like that again because mm-hmm. we never tried to do it yeah. I just sat down in my living room playing like some chords I play piano okay yeah and that tune just hit now so I didn't even know that it would have reached this far yeah I know it was a solid project but I didn't know it would have reached that far okay so so for me like that's the most spot on in my opinion the most spot on soca song ever yeah. In terms of like it could relate to anybody, mm-hmm. it it just had a feel and it healthy. Yeah. The lyrics healthy, you know, it mm-hmm. uplifting and it totally relatable. So that song, yeah, something great got for that song. Yeah. Trust me, trust me. Well, Overdue was big, big, big. Now let's fast forward to 2020. Yeah. Your monster, 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 monster. I'm calling it right now. Your monster song that you released, I think it was yesterday. You released yeah. It. All right. Pick a <laughs> side. Yeah, so I got <laughs> yeah. With you and Kess. All right. I seen on your Instagram about in October. 
you put up a picture said listen if i get 2000 likes we'll do a collaboration yeah me being the smart person i am i know that collaboration was in the works already nah. it wasn't in the works nah. it just, just came up he was always interested in doing a song with me and i okay. was always interested in doing a song so i could have just that was a hit or miss for me yeah i was i was i was confident about it happened because he was every time he see me he would say yeah boy we had a link but yeah. i like yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We going like sending you something just now. Week pass, nothing sent. Months yeah. pass, nothing sent. And then this man come in his studio to listen to this song. Yeah. No. Actually, no. He come in his studio to work on his song. But yeah. in my head, I ain't tell him nothing. But in my head, I say, I tell any producer, I like hey, Alex. He trusts me enough to just walk in his studio and start to work, dog. Yeah. So that was a real good feeling for me as a young artist to know that this man watching me, because every time you see me, you say, yo, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. I'm watching you grow. Because mm -hmm. that, 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 that helped, yeah? Because mm -hmm. sometimes I just feel like if nobody really taking on the thing, eh? And that's the next thing we in our business where it's in how much, ah, youth. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So. To give you the encouragement to yeah, keep on going. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about, boy? You ain't have time to watch me. He said, yeah, boy, I seen you, boy. All way you doing, you just continue doing that. Much. Mm -hmm. So you walk into the room, you say, yeah, bad. So I thought he was going to record one time, but he had to leave. Yeah. And next session, man record. Third session, we fix some things. Yeah. And he changed some things in his song now, but I didn't tell him that now. I was like, in my head, I was saying like, he fucking changing, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, he's guess. Yeah. He's singing for years, yeah. prominent. He should know what would, where it would take for this song to move from here to there. Yeah. So he kind of rearranged some little parts mm -hmm. that I genuinely wasn't sure about. Yeah. So if you see in this video, you see like this little bugger, he was again also. Because I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I just want to see where he going now. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, you watch me in the session and say, Dan, you look like you want to say something, man. You look like yeah. something right here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but like, nah, but yeah, yeah, you, you go ahead now. So that, that, yeah. That was a real good feeling. But mm -hmm. even moving, rewinding, mm -hmm. I was real angry writing that song, boy. Okay. Angry with my girl. Yeah. Angry, but I was just vexed with the world. Mm -hmm. So, I don't even know how I come up with the pick a side thing, but basically, yeah. it's like, if I hear, and you riding for me, no yeah. matter what, you gotta ride hard for me now. Yeah. And that's the kind of people I want in my life. That's the kind of people I need in my life. Because creative being, when we go low, Everything's stopping. You, know? you understand. I can't come you and do this interview. Me and yeah. feeling to come in cold Toronto and sing no tune mm -hmm. in Blind Tiger, but yeah. forget them, eh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I need energies around me that totally positive and understanding. I ain't saying like, mm -hmm. yes, people or yes, man or nothing, you know, but just like people. Don't. So I, I was at a point to buy, I was just like, hmm. And then that's why the voice, the, uh, and the song's so fresh, I can't, uh, the voice go, um, um, Part of the verse go reach out time in my life now. Man, nothing don't bother me. I fall up my energy. And before that was the part. But before that, I was like, um, all the years I met, um, oh shit. What's yeah. the line? Just on one it's line. So it just line. came out? It's brand new? Who have it? Anybody have it? <laughs> <laughs> Baseline, you have it back there? Yeah. Pull it up. All right. Pull it up. Yeah. You know, actually, bring it up. We got baseline from Enforcers. He's actually in come the in. building too. Yeah, come and play it for us live. You know what I mean? Big up Mac Miller in the building too. He actually made this happen. Big them up. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Big up You're Frankie, um, please, Paul Bradson, McCoy. Yeah. All right. Blazing Love. I see your shirt. Big up yourself, brother. <laughs> <laughs> nah, when the song fresh like this. This only, side, this only side, only this side. Stage. This side. Okay, okay, oh, no, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I really can't. What do you start on? Yeah. <laughs> This is this is almost like a world exclusive because again it just came out last night. Turn it off. Oh yeah, see, see that first line. Yeah. We don't want no bad vibes in the mass. I'm a life I'm talking about there now. Yeah. Pick a side as I am my side or that side. Alright, run it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just translated into a road march vibe then. Yeah. But it's really my life I talking about right here. Yeah. Better pick a side. Cause now we ready to ride. This side of fire, this side of energy, and it's a positive energy. Yeah. And the can't damage it. Light, light run. Yeah. <laughs> We're so when I say this party right and over the show, man, I'm talking to them. All the yeah. show, man. Show, man. Everything. Show, man. Tell them to take a side. Oh. Ah, no, remember. Listen, <laughs> no, listen. Stop. Stop. 
All the pain make me stronger. Yeah. I suffer no longer. Yeah. The harder the fight now, the battle is sweet. I mean, the victory is sweet. The harder the fight, the victory is sweet. So the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Each other time in my life, not no bother me. I full up my energy. Can't stop me now. So all you ready to pump. All you ready to play. All you ready for mass. Ready to make we name. This is when they're crossing the stage. Oh, shit, yeah. You're gonna see it tonight for the first time in Toronto. Yes. Yeah, man. And you see, that's what I wanted to ask you. As soon as I heard that song right there, I knew right away that was a monster of a song. You know, certain songs you could hear and just say, okay, anytime this I, is big. Anytime. This is big. This remind me of Overdue, yo. Yeah. Like, Anytime a song come from a total genuine place that yeah. is of a kind of force where like everybody we can relate to yeah. behind that song and that's just propel it because I'm mm -hmm. telling you like for over you too. Yeah. I didn't I didn't my, my carnival season wasn't the greatest because I don't I don't think they yeah. They didn't let me into the finals for the Soka Monarch and in my opinion that was the best performance I ever put on in a semi. It was spot on. Okay. And I sang a song called Kia Wait. So, I didn't think about singing a song called Over You because my time coming, that just came out of me under that energy of, of, of me feeling as though yeah. I was counted out. Yeah. So, that's, it was real fitting, long time, this are Over You. And for this one, you know, where I feel like if I wasn't saddling right personally with personal issues and them mm -hmm. kind of thing, uh, I was like, I need to talk to these people, but I had to talk to them in song. So, I was like, the first, the opening track, so like I write in a letter. Yeah. We don't want no bad vibes in the mass. So even if I come in to talk Big. to you, you know, and your vibes off. Yeah. Pick a side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, wow. And, and I just want to say blessings and thanks to Cassie Band for that mm -hmm. welcoming yeah. approach, boy. Yeah. That unit. That's big. On my that's big. Them too, that's so big. That's big right here. I performed this song the night before it was released. I performed mm -hmm. it in a in a, a place in, in, in Central Trinidad. Okay. And it so happened that right as it start now, it started to rain. Yeah. So the only place that most of the people could have shelter was on the stage. Yeah. So I see these people charging at me. So I started to wonder, yeah. like, what is going on? <laughs> but being on stage, I, I maintain the composure. Yeah. So I look up and I see it rain. I say, all right, all right, come. Yeah. So we're going to be forming a band here now because how to sell this song, you had to sell it as a road mad song. Yeah. It is a road mad song. Right now, the prominent power soaker is the jab thing or the, or the, yes. that, that, that two yes. chords, tung, 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 tung. And in Trini, yeah. our style of power soaker is more like a road match kind of yes. vibe now. So I was like, I want to bring back that real road match element in the soca music for Trinidad soca. Mm -hmm. So I was, it is it like stars aligning and God just making a way, send down some rain, yeah. they're gonna run on stage <laughs> behind me. <laughs> and right when the pan reach for them to cross the stage, yeah. it stopped rain, so they, they gotta go back out. Mm. I can show you that clip now. Watch <laughs> <laughs> that clip right here. Crazy. If it was crazy, crazy by over crazy. Yeah. I think. So you see the common the cover thing there. Okay. Oh, so this is on the stage. Yeah, this is stage. Yeah. So I say like we're going and cross the stage. Okay. Now I'm gonna I send them until we get to cross this stage now. This yeah. side <laughs> madness. Bam. Yo, so I'm what could <laughs> they so show? Yeah. All right. Uh, so what could they expect from you tonight in Blind Tiger? Fire and energy, cold and all they need, need the outside. Time. All they need outside. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 steaming right now in China yeah. Tobago and I represent where I'm from. Yeah. We're actually getting a premiere tonight because basically this is your first time outside yeah. of Trinidad where you're actually featuring a song before they actually get the big feature. In Trinidad. So you see what I mean when Soka Global, years ago now, we, a, a artist coming out here, Carnival Time, that forbidden. Yeah. You see that man in the airport, baby, you going. Yeah. <laughs> the money here, boy. Yeah. Not out there, boy. But no, right now the money global. Yes. So men yes. working during the Carnival in the season thing there. Yeah. But my mindset and and, and it resonates. Wherever you pour there, is it truth? Wherever you pour there, come back at you. I already have like four or five international things in January alone. Ready so I had to, to be in and out yeah. of the carnival. And that's because I've been preaching that soca global. 
and soca global mean that we're not bonded yeah. and boxed in by this carnival season if you want to in japan next week yeah putting things in a gear arrange with management and i am there everybody's here big yeah, big big trust me it's gonna be on fire tonight mm -hmm. i got a round here called the rapid facts mm -hmm. i ask you some quick questions and you give me back some quick answers yeah, we talking about all right rapid. okay what's your favorite color well our favorite colors yeah <laughs> color individual yeah. one now nah, at, at a point in my life it was green okay i don't know why mm -hmm. and then it was blue mm -hmm. And then I have none now. None. Yeah. Just okay. Weird. I don't know why, but fair enough. No yeah. problem. What's your biggest fear? Um, Marion to idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's everybody's <laughs> biggest fear. <laughs> okay. Favorite food. Pilau regular with uh -huh. avocado on the side of the plate. Uh huh. Big, big, big. Okay. Are you a cooker or a cleaner? But I can't cook, boy. I look right. like I can cook. <laughs> Okay, are you a cleaner? I like my place to be clean. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was the last <laughs> book you read or listened to? But I can't remember the name of the book. Yeah, again, by yeah. <laughs> um, me and Aguilar was going through it. Yeah. So I, I, I buy the barber shop now. Mm -hmm. So I seen, I, I don't like to give up. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so I see the book. Barber name is Buju. I said Buju. Let me that book day. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'll call him after this interview to find out what's the name of the book so I can answer this question properly next time. Yeah. But I read, you might not believe me, bro, I read three quarters of that book on a flight to New York hmm. and finish it in New York. Yeah. And that book teach me so much about women and how to deal with women and that kind of thing, especially during different times of their life. Yeah. That is the best book I've ever read in my life. Got you. Okay, because we'll I find love, the name I love and I'll insert it I in love the... woman. <laughs> so to be able to deal with them, I need to... Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's your hobby? But I just like to have a time then. Mm -hmm. So if running outside there with a jersey on alone is fun to me, I gonna do it. Yeah. I just like to have a time. I can't tell you, well, um, I like to go fishing down the <laughs> islands in Trinidad and Tobago <laughs> with my friends yeah. or by the river. Like, I just like to have a time. So whatever is like a brain cooler. I remember I, I, I went to an event called Island Crashes in Tobago. Mm -hmm. uh, that was like around 2013, 14. And I still never get her back yet because I'm so absorbed in work and thing at this level. Yeah. But I could remember being in that event for three days, going to parties and coming back home to sleep and bed and rest and go again. And like on the last day was when I realized that I didn't think about any problems or anything concerning work. And I was like, but after the fact. if I could get her, I feel like I had to have now because I'm so invested now. But that vibes there. So having a good time is my getaway. Yeah. I don't really have to be about drinking and doing anything, but just having a good time around good people. Makes sense. So that's how I'll be to me really. Like, I just have a car race. Have a good time. Oh, All right. <laughs> What's one song that had the biggest influence on you in your life? Um, biggest influence, boy? Mm -hmm. Everybody expects me to say over you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't necessarily but have think, to be your song, you know. Just a song that oh, had... Oh, a tune? Yeah. It could be one of yours. It could be anything. I know that's a hard one, but mm -hmm. influence on my life. Mm -hmm. You know what song I really like? Yeah. It's not really like I, I'm not even like the greatest fan of the artist, but like a song that changed my mood influenced me. Mm -hmm. So you see, Skankin' Sweet from Chronix. That Big. when Big. I vex, I just literally go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I just kind of simmer me now because mm -hmm. of the lyrics, the man singing. But in terms of like terms of like career wise, yeah. is he bumper like Rain Boy? It opened up my eyes to something. Mm -hmm. They wasn't playing. It was on a rhythm with Kess, Marshall, and pretty somebody else. They wasn't playing this song. Yeah. I was like, I know my song bad, boy. Why am I not playing my thing, boy? So I was pumping in Marshall and Nick or something. And I just started to get videos on Instagram of people in New York City. New York City yeah. responsible for that song, Richard Got Rich. You. Man on top of pole. Man on boat ride. Man... Just New York City fall in love with that song. And when they came to Trinidad, yeah. and they had all these events where the New Yorkers would go, like even during the daytime events and that kind of thing, and they literally used to go up to the DJs and say, Eh, uh, Funnels, Bumper Like Rain. Yeah. That showed me the power mm -hmm. that lies within the people. And I, 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 at that point there, I started to forget about if my song played on radio or not yeah. heavily. 
if this one or that one like my song i just believe that once you put something out there and it is to be the people will create it fair so skanking sweet and bumper like green was like yeah yeah big 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 one there okay mm-hmm. um your favorite movie of all times i don't really watch movies though. yeah i don't watch tv yeah I, 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 as a kid i was like an outside boy mm-hmm. or i remember and then watching the cartoon like and the road. power rangers and Nah, I wanna go outside. Yeah. So in training, like I'll wake up in the morning, brush my teeth, breakfast. Mommy, I can go outside. No, boy, the sun yeah. too hot. We go yeah. in this hardy morning. Nah. But yeah, yeah I don't know, movies and things. Nah. I like documentaries. Those anything okay. that could teach me something. You, what's one of your favorite documentaries? Then? Any doc, any narco documentary, basically. Yeah. Big, so like big, Netflix. Big. Yeah. <laughs> narcos, big. like yeah. I don't know because I just I'm fascinated by all these guys operate. Yeah. And. Everybody have the same demise in the end. Are they yeah. dead or in prison? Yeah. But I just like to see how everybody reached how the end. <laughs> <laughs> how you got there? How yeah. did you end up there? I don't know. Yeah, I, I yeah. ain't involved in that kind yeah. of trade. But it's just how did you end? But I learned a lot of things yeah. that helped me with my trade. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah. You prefer water or juice? Not by water, but that's life. Water is okay. life, and a I juice could go on. Yeah. <laughs> you mad? Okay. You prefer something sweet or salty? Nah, sweet like y'all. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, nice. yeah. Last one here. Your favorite comedian of all times? Um, Larry Joseph. Yes. Big, big, big. Big time. Big. He's a pioneer to me. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Joseph. Yes. No, Larry's big. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know that. That's the end of the rapid facts wrong. Before I get you out of here, right now the floor. The floor. Hold on. We're going to get there. <laughs> no, the floor is yours. Can you give us a little piece of... <laughs> okay. Can you please give us a little piece of um, one of your popular songs so we know exactly who we're speaking to here? Well, they were. You tell me. Let me get a little piece of Give me, one. okay. Give us a quick medley. All right, shit. Yeah. Um, well, next time I'm off, baby, there'll be no more you and me. Fed up of you using me, believing in your eyes. She making a fool of me with all your hypocrisy. For too long now I believing in your eyes. You know, chuka, 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 chuka. I roam in the street, da, da, da. targeting every female species I meet. Yeah, I start to feel sweet, sweet, sweet. Moving from girl to girl like a trick or treat. But it's not Halloween, it's carnival time. <laughs> we all have women that's come from daddy. <laughs> 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 Big Bienvenida, Trinidad y Tobago. But we in Toronto now. Taste about me, Rando, that man say mucho tempo. But unfortunately, that's all the Spanish that I man know. Huh. But I wanna hold you, hold you, hold you, hold you, hold you. Big, 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 <laughs> I'm going big, to the big, obvious big, one big. now. You give me something I need, yeah. You give me something I plead, yeah. You give me something I crave for. I really need you too. I really want to feel great now So let me have my way now No, I never want to leave Because I'm so invested in you Alright, let him come blind tiger later for me. <laughs> I know the verse now uh, ting, ting. We don't want no bad vibes in the mass Hey, this pick a side what? Say pick a side what? And we don't want no bad vibes in the mass Say pick a side Pick a, pick a side Yeah, what going on? All who ready to jump All who ready to play All who ready for mass Ready to make we name all who ready to jump out of we have had a jump out of we have had you better pick a side because now we're ready to ride it this side of fire this <laughs> side of better we love we... <laughs> before i get you out of here the floor is yours right now anything you want to say anything you want to big up leave any info any social media handles anything the floor is yours right now yeah blessings to everybody in toronto as i was telling the thing last night the streams they're on the insights you're all on top in terms of who listens to for now. Okay. So yeah, there's my city. Yeah. There's home. You know? Blessings to every so called of out there. You know, just tune into me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. Everything is Ufanal. So just Google Ufanal and you'll see everything fall down. You know? All the fans of Soka Music, you know, all the supporters of Soka Music, everybody invested in like yourself coming and do this interview. This is important to document. So when you post this up, people could watch ten years Hey, wait, this is when Ufan come and perform Blind Tiger you for the understand. first time. First month of the year, 2020. We remember that. That was epic. And all the things he talk about. And he's, we see it unfold now because he was saying that this and that had to happen. And it happened for Soka. And Soka is here. So it's important. So thank you for actually reaching out and linking. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah, this is very important. 
I just blessing some of my team. We got McCoy, we got Spoil Brad Song, we got Earl back in Trini, Akil, everybody, team, events, one team creatives, everybody who play an integral role in pushing Earth and Hazard. Soka music by extension. And I want to spend a, send a special shout out to my producer, Lunatics Productions. Oh, he, big them. Well, one of my producers, but he was responsible, you know, for the the, 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 the polishing and the little small little changes in the Earth and Owl song for mm -hmm. the better. So that's like Overdue, No Abla, a song called Lock On, um, Pick a Side Now, and definitely Soka Global. So we just start. Yes. Only two years in actually, and look at the, look at the amount of work um, Lunatics and I did. So we have more to go, and blessings to every single soca artist out there right now, just doing the thing and holding the strain. Because it's like a rubber band. Mm -hmm. When they pull back that rubber band, and if you pull a little piece of paper on that rubber band, and then like that rubber band. God. Excellent! EA, blessings, it's been man. a pleasure. Thank you so, so, so bustle. very much. Muscle and bustle. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is muscle. But hold on, before I give you the outro, I got to big up some people myself. Man. I got to big up Macamill, all right? He actually made this happen. He called me and said, yo, let's make it happen. And he made it happen right away. And I also got a bigger baseline and the enforcers in the building. Oh, that's my family there. So I got to big them up. Got to big up my wife that's doing the production side of things too. You know what I mean? And big up yourself too, EA. E team, team, boy. All right, big up. Mad, excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle. And this has been another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.